Ruto. In our language, I would call you Racheri. Because when we put them in English, they disturb us. So, Racheri and Leia. You remember there were two. It was Racheri and Leia. The Deputy Speaker of Parliament, the Speaker of the IARA, our, our guest speakers from the U.S., Congressman and the Bishop, and all our other delegates from other countries and the ministers of Uganda and members of parliament and staff of parliament. If you want to quarrel properly, you go to African languages. You quarrel better because African languages, you can say a word and it hits you. When I heard the speakers who were speaking, I thought that when I come here, I start by saying, Sabagamba. You know, when I say Sabagamba, I will be Okubatiora in Rinyankore to mock you, to challenge you. It's like a challenge, mocking or challenging. Sabagamba. The translation is, did I not tell you? Have I not told you before? Now you heard what the bishop from the USA was saying, Bishop Alexander. I don't know whether I met him, but he told you that the mandate God gave us was multiply and fill the world which the Africans do very well. Because now we are going to be the biggest population on earth. But the second mandate is establish dominion over nature. That's what he said. Yeah. Establish dominion over nature because you are created on Saturday after all the other creatures had been created and you are created in the image of God. This is what I keep telling you. So even when you pray, this praying sometimes I see some withdraw. It is as if God has not given you the mandate already. Shouldn't the praying be about we doing the mandate which God gave us well. And that's what the challenge he, he gave you. He said, you, you have got all this. Why don't you use, use them for the glory of God? He, that's what he said. I heard him when I was here. So then I said, Sabagamba wano. Did, did I not tell them? So when you hear that, uh, uh, and you should listen to my speech tonight, I will be talking about, it is as if he has read part of my speech, the bishop. Tonight I will be talking about that. This idea that aid, Africa needs aid. We don't need aid. We have got everything here. But because of the slave mentality, we don't use it. So I thought this was my, this is the point which came, which came when I listened to uh, the bishop talking. I want to thank the congressman from Michigan because you have seen that we have got 
the, 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 Western, the, the Western people you see here are not the only ones. There are others also. The ones who come to tell you about homosexuals, who, who, about what? About uh, abortion. You now know that there are other Americans, other West, Western people who think like us. So you have seen it. So I want to thank them for what uh, they contributed. Now, I, I want to thank you for sustaining the vision of prayer breakfast. I, I copied this when I went to the US first time with Mama, and I went with, the, with Cardinal Wamara, with, I think, Archbishop Okoth, I went with a number of people when we were invited by Doug Cole. There was a friend of ours called Doug Cole. He's the one who invited us. He was the organizer. And by that time, I don't remember which year it was, but I had been a rebel from the church. I had forgotten about the churches. This was because in the 1960s, I was a very, a very active church member. I was a leader of the Scripture Union, president actually, from 1961. Initially, I was a mere member. Then I became secretary. Then I became president of the Scripture Union from 1961 to 1966, 65. But along the way we started disagreeing in the scripture union. And the reason we were I was disagreeing with them, we were a number of them, but one of them was that they were not practicing what, what Jesus taught us to do. Because Jesus told you clearly. Moses, Moses had the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not do this, thou shalt not do ten of them. But when Jesus came, he said, ah, all this can be summarized into two. Love God with all your heart and with all your might and love your neighbor as you love yourself. He says this is the summary of all the, all the laws are summarized, summarized by this. But when you would see what, what was happening here in, in, in Uganda, that was one, one message of, of, of Jesus. Love God and love your neighbor as you love yourself. Then this question of religions, he also handled, handled it. The parable of the Good Samaritan. This man who was attacked by thieves on the way and left thinking that he was dead. Then a big religious man came, passed by him, didn't help him. Then another one came, passed by him, didn't help him. Then somebody from another religion and I think another tribe a Samaritan comes and he's the one who helps him so Jesus said now of these three who was useful to this man who was the neighbor of this man it was obvious the answer was obvious so the problems we were having here in the 1960s sectarianism 
of religion, Catholics against Protestants, Christians against Muslims, tribes against one another. So I said, but what sort of Bernardine are these? What sort of religious people are these? What sort of religious people are these? Who don't follow what Jesus said? So I said, bye bye. Kanda, kanda uko. That's how, why I walked out of the uh, scripture union. And when we went to fight, we, 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 we actually were preaching the, the gospel of Jesus in fighting. Because even the fighting, the scripture union people were telling me that uh, Matthew chapter 5, someone on the mount, if somebody hits you on this side, you turn the other one also. I said, sorry. Kwenda, kwenda, kwenda. I, answer, I answered them. I said, do you, do, you, do you remember when Jesus came to the Ekar, to, to, to the temple, and he found people sitting in the, in the temple? He was violent. He overturned the tables, and there's no record that he paid compensation. So, we really disagreed with, with, the, uh, with the, so even when we were fighting, when you hear of the NRM doctrine, actually it is a, a Christian doctrine. We believe, we don't believe, in, we reject sectarianism. We don't care about your religion, we don't care about your tribe, we don't care whether you are, you are a man or a woman, and Jesus said so. We shall know them by their fruits. What we care about is what you do, your actions. Like the actions of the good Samaritan and, and, and many other examples. So, so therefore, from 1965, I was really never bothered with the church groups. They would invite me. I would go there politely, uh, socially, sit there, listen to the music, listen, to, but, but uh, I was not interested in, in, in their substance, because they were not, they were not, uh, they, they were misguided, and they were misguiding our people. So in the army, you know, they used to have a practice in the army of having uh, uh, chaplains of, of Muslims and of Catholics and of uh, the other ones, we said, please, go, 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 go. We don't need you here. You go. You go and sort yourself. Don't come in the army. Even now, we have never allowed them back, up to now. We don't have chaplains of army. We don't have, no, no, no. First, go and sort yourselves out. So, when I went to the U.S., I saw this good, I, I, I found they were doing exactly what we thought should be done. I don't know, you call it ecumenical or what? Do you have such a word? Is it ec ecumenical? Uh -huh. The prayer breakfast, according to Doug Cole, was bringing together all these different people. So I said, this is good. This is what we have been telling our people, that don't look at these, these labels Look at the actions of people. And uh, that's where the, the, the godliness, godliness is. So when I liked it, I liked the, 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 the prayer breakfast approach because it was like our approach in the, in the resistance, in, the, in our struggle. And I want to congratulate the religious people. I, I see them here. When we came, they also copied our example and started the Inter-Religious Council. Mbakubiri Mungarobandangi. They started the Inter-Religious Council of Uganda, and recently, there was a picture, which I think you should really capture and, and, and put all over the place. When the president of Iran, President Raisi of Iran, when he came here, he saw me here, then he went 
to the mosque, the mosque of, the, of, 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 Nakasero, of Nakasero. First of all, the, the Iranians are Shia. They belong to the Shia group. Our Nakasero people are, are Sunni. But here, you had the, the Shia president going to the mosque of the Sunni, and I think they're the ones who, who invited him or he wanted to go there. I don't remember how it was. But he was there. A Sunni, a, a Shia, had no problem going to a Shia mosque. And when he went there, he found our Mufti, but he found the Archbishop Kazimba there with his red things. So, you had, you had the Shia president, you had the Sunni uh, Mufti, you had the Archbishop of, of, of one of the, of the Christian churches, because he happened to be the present chairperson of the Interreligious Council. So I don't know what Rice thought. I didn't see him after that. I think he must also have been shocked to see a bishop sitting in the front of, of the mosque. So, so therefore, I, do, I want to congratulate the, uh, the, you, the organizer of the prayer breakfast, because I did it once, and I don't remember even how we did it, but you people, you copied it and you, you, you sustained it, because otherwise I, I, would have, I would have forgotten about it. But so I want to congratulate you, because it's a very good practice. Now, I don't know why they don't use it so much in the West. Why does it not help them? When I get time, I will ask them. This inter-sectoral approach, why don't you use it in, 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 in many other situations? Because it, it, it has helped us here. When you hear that Uganda is recovering, is now progressing, Uganda was a failed state. It was a failed state. But because these people listen to our message, say, please, forget about the label, labels. Go for the actions of people. We shall know them by their fruits. No, 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 no. And they listen to us. And uh, there are still some who still push that nonsense. But as you see, whenever we go for elections, we win on the first round, which means the majority of the people of Uganda bought the line of, of, the, of Jesus, which was the story of the Good Samaritan. That was Jesus' story. It was not mine. Jesus is the one who said, this, this man was, was beaten. A Pharisee, what was a Pharisee? Was he a bishop or archbishop or what? A Pharisee, he was a Pharisee. 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 What was a, a, a Pharisee? Your Excellency, there were different sects in Israel at the time. There was a group called the Pharisees. There was another one. They are, they are like what now? Are they like archbishop or like the what? Pharisee would be the chief of them would be like an archbishop. Oh, but that, oh, and the Levite. A Levite would also be a child or um, a member of the priesthood. Uh -huh. Then, who are the Samari Samaritans? The were Samaritan. they a religion? Were they a tribe or what? The Samaritans were a group of people who were cast out of um, society 
because one, they lived in a place called Samaria, which had been passed on to them because um, lepers, thieves, liars, cheats, um, prostitutes lived in that area. So anybody from Samaria would be a person that was not allowed in society. Uh, so, so if you walked out of that and you came into public, uh, then you. you would either be forgiven or you had been healed uh, or set free or somehow you managed to get back into so, common society. Thank you so much. So you see, this, thank you so much, uh, Bishop Serwada. So you can see th th this message of Jesus really is, is revolutionary. And I don't know why people don't take it up. Uh, he, it was clear. Judge people by their actions, not by their identity. And we tell you, please, stop the, the politics and the thinking of identity. Recently, I was with Mama in Tororo, who were commissioning a cement factory. And we got a long lecture from a Hindu. Do you know Hindus? These Hindus have their book. You don't even know about it. They have their book, and they say it has been there for 5,000 years, their book. He was telling us. And if you hear what they are saying, they are really... So that's why I like the prayer breakfast culture. Because it is the culture of unity in diversity. That's why I like it. And I want to congratulate you. Now, when you look at the conflicts in the world, the people in those conflicts are religious people. Are people who have got religion. So, where is the message of Jesus in all of this? If you see all these wars going on, these are all people of religion, Muslims, Christians, Barwan Rachi, Aniyal Kumazima. What are they fighting for? Who is for the truth? So I think we should really be strict in auditing ourselves. You cannot say you are, you are a follower of, of Christ, then you are the most unfair, you are the most biased, you are the most, uh, uh, what do you call this, uh, fanatical, what, what is the English word there? When you have got, uh, When you are biased, you don't have a balanced approach. So we here in Uganda, that message of tolerance, of Jesus actually, because that's what Jesus did. Because we, the, the, the traditional people here, we the African tribes, we believed in the law of Moses. An eye for an eye. Uh, a tooth for a tooth. It is, it is the Jesus part which came and said, uh uh, no. Forgive unconditionally. We could forgive our traditional religions, uh, uh, tri tribes, could forgive, but with a price. You had to do Okarawa, you had to do blood settlement. The issue of unconditional forgiveness is from Christianity. Jesus, Jesus even says, love your, love your enemies. He says that. Yeah. Because he says, if you only love, love your, your, your friends, how are you different from the pagans? Because they also do the same. This is Jesus. Kati edin jemsoma erudawa. Where are they? What religion do they follow? Why can't they not be balanced? And we stop all this chaos in the world. Because it is all based on selfishness. 
anybody who does not it is greed omururu and selfishness so i thank you for sustaining the tradition of, of of the prayer breakfast but please bring out that unity within diversity because this is the main point don't, don't turn it into a ritual you just come come no 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 the reason i imported it was because of that because Doug Ko was telling me how they were able to bring people, even, uh, even Hindus, even what, I would find them there. 